build me a sign up form name email password sign up all within less than eight seconds very impressive this is a new project called open ui where you could just describe the front end that you want and it builds it automatically it is completely open source really really impressive check this out so build me a sign up form and it starts building dynamically there it goes. Name, email, password, sign up, all within less than eight seconds. Very impressive, but that's not it. Let's say we want something else. I'm gonna go ahead and click this button. I'm gonna hover over this and I'm gonna say, split this into separate first name and last name fields. And there we go. We have first name now, last name, email, and password. It is that simple. I'm gonna show you how to install this, then I'm gonna show you how to use it because it has a ton of awesome features. So let's get into it. All right, this is the project, Open UI, and I'll drop a link to the repository in the description below. It has six and a half thousand stars on GitHub. So a couple cool things about this. One, it is very easy to install. I did not run into a single issue while installing it. Two, it's completely open source, and not only that, but you can power it with local open source models with Olama. So very easy to use, completely open source and free if you're using Olama. It also has a Docker image, which makes it even easier. But to be honest, I didn't even need it. All right. The first thing we're going to do is clone the repository. And to get this URL, which you can just see right here, I'll also drop it in the description below, but go to the repository page, click this green code button. Here's the URL, click copy right there. So now we just clone the repository just like so. Next, we're going to CD into open UI slash backend, and then we're going to spin up a new Conda environment. So Conda create dash n open UI Python equals 3.10. And since I already have an environment, it's going to ask me if I want to remove the existing one. Sure. You won't see that though. Continue, let it install everything it needs. And then we're going to grab this little code right here. So Conda activate open UI, hit enter. And now this environment is active because you can see it right there. Next, we want to install all of the requirements. So pip install dot that easy, hit enter. This just takes about a minute. All right, that's done. Next, we're going to export our OpenAI API key. And like I mentioned, you can do this completely locally, but I'll show you that after. So we're gonna do export OpenAI API key equals, and then drop your OpenAI API key right there, hit enter. And at this point, we're really done. It's that easy. So the last thing you're gonna do is actually spin up the server. So we're gonna do Python dash M open UI, hit enter and that'll spin up a URL that we can go to and actually play around with the project. And it's done, it works perfectly. So we're gonna grab this URL right here, copy it, and then open it up in a new window. And interestingly, it saved the history of my previous creations right here somehow. So not sure how it did that. It's probably just being cached somewhere, but that's it. So we have a lot of different options that we can go through now. So first, let me just create a very simple front end application. And this is all for front end. It doesn't build the back end for you, but there are plenty of projects that can do that. So I'm going to say, build me a login form. I hit enter and it starts to build the code, which you could see right there. And you can actually see the front end being built in real time right there. So there it is very simple, but that's all we need. So we have username, password, sign in. Now, if you click this little button right here, we can select any element on the page and specifically comment on it for changes that we want. So for example, I'll click this area and I'll say change this to be email instead of username and then hit enter. And then it's going to rebuild it with that change. All right, and there we go. And now I'm realizing one thing we're missing is if somebody needs to sign up if they don't already have an account. So let's do that. Add a sign up button for people who don't already have an account. Okay, and it's rebuilding once again. Sign in, forgot password and there's the sign up button. How easy is this? This is so cool. All right, so we also have the ability to see it in different views. So we have the desktop view, we also have the iPad view, and then we have the mobile view. Now, this is obviously not very responsive, and I haven't tested this, so let's see if it works. I'll just say make this responsive, okay? So it's definitely looking different. Maybe it's taking up the size of the window now. So beautiful form. Then I click the tablet view. It did seem to change size, and there's the mobile view and again it changed size so all I said was make this responsive and it worked perfectly. Now it does have a toggle light mode, dark mode, which is nice. I'm not gonna click it though because I don't want to shine the bright light on your screen right now. You can also view the chat history. 
and all the changes step by step, which is so cool. Then we also have different options. We have HTML and JSX, but you can also convert it to anything else you want, such as React. So let's just convert it to React. And there it is, now the code's in React. And so you can actually convert it to all of these different front end frameworks, and I'm sure they'll be adding more soon. They have a share button right here. They have a download button so you can download the file, and then you can also copy it right there. Now, if we click into the settings right here, we can see a few settings. By the way, everything I've been doing is GPT 3.5 Turbo not even GPT-4. So it is really efficient and really high quality, even without the most cutting edge model. So if you click that, you have two options, GPT-3.5 and GPT-4, as well as Olama. So all I had to do was have Olama up and running. It'll read which models we have available, and then you could simply click it, and that's it. Now it's running completely locally. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Olama, I've done a bunch of tutorials on it. I'll drop that in the description below. And what's really cool is you can actually just drag a screenshot of a UI for it to recreate. So I took a picture of the Google homepage. I'm gonna drag it onto here. And let's see, it also allows me to describe the screenshot you uploaded, but we don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna hit enter and hopefully it just recreates it like that. So this is a little slower because it actually has to read the image. Okay, there's the Google logo. Now, one thing to keep in mind while this is loading up is the only open source model that it currently supports that actually has image recognition is Lava. So if you want to do something like this, you need to use Lava. All right, there we go. Uh, almost got it. So let's change this. So I'm going to click this little button right here. Click over here. So change this to a microphone icon and a camera icon. So it got that part wrong, but that's okay. Let's just see. All right. So that time it did not actually change it, interestingly enough. So I'm going to try one thing. I'm going to switch it over to GPT-4 update. And now let's try it again. So I'm going to select this whole little area. Once again, I'm going to say change these buttons to a microphone icon and a camera icon. And let's see if GPT-4 can do this better. All right, so it didn't work again. It seems like maybe the image recognition part is working, but not as well as just using the text generation. Let me show you some of the other things that I've created. So here's a to-do list. Here's a user profile card. And here we can see like social apps right there. I have a date picker, calculator, and so on. So it works incredibly well, like surprisingly well. And you can choose any element from a website or the entire website itself. So let's try one more thing. So I'm simply gonna say a SaaS pricing page. Let's see how it does. And the cool thing is you can see it being built in real time, which I really like. So GPT-4 is definitely a lot slower than GPT-3.5 Turbo, obviously. So I switched it over to desktop mode and there we go. So this is the basic plan. Let's see if it adds other plans. And if it doesn't, I can just tell it to. Looks like it's doing it already. I didn't even need to prompt it to do so. So if you're a non-developer and you want to build code now, it is so easy. You can build the front end as easily as I'm showing you here. You can use projects like Devon, Pythagora, and a bunch of other projects to build the back end. I mean, there is really no excuse if you wanted to build something to actually go and build it. It's so easy now. So I can see that the basic and pro plan and the enterprise plan are all different sizes. So I'm gonna say, make sure that the three plans are equal size. And I also switch back to GPT 3.5 turbo for the sake of speed. And I can already see it's much faster. So I'm gonna say, make the width of each plan equal in size. I'm trying to get each three of these plans to be equal width. Let's see if this works. All right, there we go. Now they are all equal in size. So I still see a little issue. The get started button is not equal in all three. So let's go ahead and try to fix that. So I'm gonna say, make sure the get started buttons in each plan are aligned vertically. All right, and it worked. I mean, how incredible is this? I am so excited about this project. I'll drop all the links in the description below. Hopefully you play around with it and enjoy it, get some value out of it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.